Hello, everyone. My name is Lydia Lee from Monash University, and my topic today is on improving estimates of grassland curing in Victoria, Australia, using satellite remote sensing. Fires are a major social, economic, and natural hazard in Australia. Take the Black Summer Fire, for example. It was the most devastating fire season of recent years and was not fully extinguished for almost an entire year. Victoria was one of the worst hit states where fire burned 1.58 million hectares of land, of which one fifth of the total burned area consisted of grasslands. Grassland curing is one of the most important indicators for determining the susceptibility of grass to ignite or propagate a fire, since the amount of dry grass can have a dramatic effect on the fire danger ratings. So, what is grassland curing? It is defined as the progressive senescence and drying out of a grass, leaving dead materials behind. Grassland curing degree is measured by the percentage of dead grass material in the grassland. From the image on the right, it would be 0% cured if grass is completely green, and 100% cured if it's completely dried. Traditionally, grassland curing are estimated using ground-based approaches. Destructive sampling is the commonly agreed upon most accurate method. However, it is very costly, time-consuming, and labor-intensive. Pictures on the right are from when I conducted destructive sampling in 2018. It often took the entire day, and I stayed in the lab until very late, cutting, categorizing, and baking grass. Very exciting times. So, is there a way to have extensive area coverage, frequent revisit time, and instant grassland curing estimates without the arduous fieldwork? The answer is yes. We can use remote sensing images to obtain the information needed to calculate grassland curing degrees. Currently, the highest spatial resolution grassland curing maps for Victoria is at 1,000 meters spatial resolution, meaning every pixel covers an area of 1,000 meters squared. Therefore, the higher the spatial resolution, the smaller the pixel size, and the better the ability to detect land features accurately. There are many satellites in space. For my research, I use Sentinel-2, Landsat-8, and MODIS. Spatial resolution, spectral resolution, and temporal resolution determine the quality and the frequency of the images. The liveliness of the grass is reflected by different spectral bands. The first step is to determine the interannual variability of grassland curing in Victoria and improve grassland curing estimates using higher spatial resolution satellite imageries. This research establishes the use of Landsat 8 to estimate grassland curing to be an effective method. Data and methodology used in this study include destructive ground sampling, satellite imageries, and visual observations. Picture on the right shows my five sample sites in Victoria. Graph on the left shows the curing calculated from satellite data. We can see that December, January, and February has the highest curing degrees. Graph on the right compares the grassland curing calculated by satellite, ground, and vigil, along with the antecedent precipitation index. All sites have similar patterns. So let's take a look, closer look at one of them. Satellite and field curing estimates are similar to each other, while visual curing estimates are higher than both of them. And precipitation has a negative correlation with curing. I used pair t-tests to test if curing estimates calculated by Landsat 8 and the ground sampling have equal population mean. Supported by the table on the right, we can say that there is no substantial difference between the two sample sets, and that both samples have equal population mean. We can conclude that at 95% confidence level, Landsat 8 estimates can be considered the same as destructive sampling estimations. This led to the next research goal of testing if and how much inter-satellite variability ISV exists and what affects the magnitude of ISV. Results suggest that ISV is affected by spatial resolution, spatial resolution difference, time, and location. Satellite data include MODIS, 
Landsat 8 and Sentinel 2 downloaded from USGS. Land use map for grasslands identification is obtained from the Lewis, and base map is from VicMap. Figure on the right shows the boundary of my observation area. I used the satellite data to calculate grassland curing degree GCDs, which are then made into grassland curing maps. The differences between grassland curing degree calculated by different spatial resolution satellites are called intersatellite variability, ISV. These are then made into ISV maps. The higher the ISV, the larger the difference in GCD. Figures below show how curing degree varies as calculated by different satellites. These are the grassland curing maps. The higher the curing, the redder the color. And these are the inter-satellite variability maps. Green indicates low ISV, and red indicates high ISV. When ISV is between 0 to 4, we can say that ISV is low and inconsiderable. When it is between 5 to 20, ISV is high and significant. From these two graphs, we can see that there are more high ISV between Landsat 8 and MODIS than that of Sentinel-2 and Landsat-8. These two graphs show that the larger the spatial resolution difference, the more sat intersatellite variability that can be detected. In order to further test and verify the results, I used Landsat-8 and MODIS images from the past five years to calculate the intersatellite variability. In general, there are more high ISV than low ISV, especially during winter and spring. These graphs show the relationship between intersatellite variability and distance to residential land, seasonality, temperature, and precipitation. This leads us to the next conclusion. We observe that when intersatellite variability is low, there is a negative correlation with precipitation and a positive correlation with distance and temperature, vice versa for when ISV is high. Therefore, the necessity of using higher spatial resolution data increases when grasslands are closer to the city, temperature is lower, and precipitation is heavier. Based on the above result, I developed a simple decision support model on when and where to use higher spatial resolution satellite for grassland curing observations. Numbers are arbitrarily assigned to indicate the necessity of using higher spatial resolution satellite data. The higher the number, the more necessary. From this model, it is recommended to use high spatial resolution satellite data when intersatellite variability is large, distance to city is short, or grassland area is large. Overall, my research established the use of Landsat 8 as an effective method for grassland curing estimation. I used various spatial resolution satellites to explore intersatellite variability, followed by validating and verifying the previous findings with five-year data and analyzing the impact factors. In the future, I would like to extend my research to cover a longer time period and larger study area. Thank you for listening to my presentation, and please feel free to contact me for more details.